I'm Susan McMillan and I have had heart disease pretty much my whole life. Um, I was first diagnosed when I was four years old um, with an enlarged heart and doctors just followed me. I lived a healthy, normal life um, and then at 14 I was getting ready for eighth grade and um, said, oh, I don't feel very good, Mom, and next thing I knew I had passed out um, on the bathroom floor and Lo and behold, the doctor said, um, yes, it's time that we need to treat this. So I had my first pacemaker at 14, um, and then about every seven years, um, six and a half to seven years since then, I have a new pacemaker put in. Um, the beauty of having a pacemaker is, I guess you can say it just kind of ensures that my heart's gonna beat for me. Um, when my heart gets lazy and doesn't wanna pump, it's going to take care of it for me. I don't let that, I don't let heart disease define me. Um, I'm able to live my life and do what I want to do. Um, and so pacemakers have obviously been on a regular schedule. I just had one a week ago. Um, and I think this is number seven. Uh, also during my heart journey, I had um, the experience of getting off of a plane and Shortly thereafter, I had a stroke. Um, that was not a very pleasant experience, but fortunately, again, I was um, surrounded by family, and I looked at my husband, I said, Something, something's not right, and my dad had parked a couple of cars down, and there was two of him coming at me, and that certainly wasn't right. And so they seated me in one of the rocking chairs at Cracker Barrel, and handed me a, something to drink and I dropped it and at that point they knew that it was something serious and so they um, were able to get the help that I needed and found out that it was a PFO um, that I was born with, had, a, had all my life, but I never had symptoms of it so it never needed to be treated and at that point there were only two doctors in the country that performed the procedure so again we loaded up a couple weeks later, we went and had that treated with a stent. Today, that is treated here locally um, every day, and it's a very simple procedure with a stent. And again, I live my life. I'm very fortunate that I don't let heart disease define me. It's part of my story, but it's not my story. I've been able to, I feel, live a pretty normal life, or a, what I consider a pretty normal life. I have two healthy children, um, I travel, I do what I want, um, I don't have any restrictions on me, I try to exercise, eat healthy, and um, keep my doctor's appointments and do, do what you know, is recommended for me and I think that's the best way when, you know, when you're given the diagnosis of heart disease, nobody likes to hear it, we don't like to hear any of those diagnoses, but I always say to people, have your pity party, feel sorry for yourself for the moment, and then go fight it. You can handle it. Tomorrow's coming and just pray about it and you'll get over it. Fight it. Don't ever give up. Um, you know, I think we have to always look for tomorrow. There's always new things coming out. And, you know, I think back to how long I've had heart disease and how far we've come and there's always new things coming out. Always ask questions. You are your biggest advocate. Um, ask questions. Know what's going on with your health and, and don't give up. Read about your diagnosis, but don't read too much and don't read too much into it. The internet's great, but it can be your worst enemy. I think trust your doctors because they know best and they, they've gone to school for the degree. They know what, they know what we need and they, they will lead us and they will take care of us. And, and just keep that positive attitude because I think that's what, you know, don't lose your hope. Hope is just so critical. Um, and look at, your, look at the people that you're living for and that's what, that's what keeps me going. You know, I look at the ones around me and, and that's, who I, that's who I fight for every day. That's why I get out of bed and go. And again, one in three of women have heart disease. So we're not in this alone. So don't, don't ever feel like you're alone. Look around. Somebody else out there is with you. And, and you're not alone. We're not alone. We've got a group, 
and look for us. We're together. Join us on Friday, February 7, 2020, for the Go Red Columbia press conference and day party being held at the Charles R. Drew Wellness Center from 12 to 2. Registration is open and free on Eventbrite.